Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to do some very basic decorative stitch patterns. Even if all you have is a straight stitch, many of these you can do. So let's get started. Before you even get started stitching, you want to make sure you press what's going to be on top really, really well. Also, press your fabric on the back. So you want to make sure everything's pressed and layered properly. When you're doing, whether it's a large quilt, table runner, pot holder, placemat, whatever it is, make sure the cotton batting and the fabric for the back is extending out a little bit past the edges. On a large quilt, I recommend at least two inches. On a small pot holder, half inch to an inch. I wouldn't make it any bigger than that. Then you need to pin the layers together. I'm just using straight pins on this one because it's so small, but a quilt or a large table runner, I would use large safety pins. Before you start stitching, you need to decide the type of thread and color that you would like to use. You can find this at Walmart and Joanne Fabrics and Crafts, and it is machine quilting thread. This is variegated thread. This blue one actually has multiple shades of blue in it. It goes from very light to medium blue. The one next to it has pink and pale green in it. The type of presser foot you use is also very important. Here is a standard presser foot. You have a risk of having your fabric stretch and pucker when doing your stitches. This is a stitch in the ditch foot and it has a little piece there in the center and right there where the needle would go down. And the ditch is where two pieces of fabric go to get, come together. So that little piece of metal sits right down in the ditch and you use that as a guide. Is a walking presser foot. All right, this is what it looks like. It helps to prevent the layers of your fabric from shifting while you are stitching. This is an attachment for the walking foot and it's a guide bar to help you uh, separate the lines evenly as you are stitching. There's a hole right back here and that's where this end is inserted inside there. This is what it looks like when the guide bar is inserted. You can push it closer to the walking foot if you want your rows closer together or pull it farther out if you want your rows of stitching to be farther apart. So to stitch down the center of this uh, first column here, I just put the guide bar on the seam kept the guide bar on the seam, and it helps you to keep your stitching straight. I'm going to demonstrate stitch in the ditch using the stitch in the ditch foot. Here is that little metal piece that's sitting down in this seam right here. I recommend that you first manually lower the needle exactly where you want to start, and then begin stitching. And don't look at your needle, just look at that metal piece and make sure it stays in the ditch. And this way you can evenly stitch down all of the seams that you want to do. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of puckering here already. So this is the risk you have when you're doing that, when you have a regular presser foot. So I'm just going to undo my pins there a little bit, pull the fabric out taut, and try to keep it from puckering. When you're doing these quilting stitches, especially if you're just doing a straight stitch, I would enlarge length of your stitches. These were a little too small. I've lengthened my stitch. And now here I go again. So all 
I did was stitch in all of the seams, but let me show you the back. Now, this row right here is the first row that I did, and you can see it looks like it's gathering just a little bit. The stitch was too small. Because you're going through a lot of layers when you do quilting stitches, you need to lengthen your stitch a little bit. And always do a little test stitch so that you get the one that you like. Everything else, I lengthen the stitch, and so it looks really nice. On this quilt right here, I only did stitch in the ditch. Before you put the walking foot on, you need to remove this from your machine. This piece here goes over the screw that holds in your needles. Then put the screw in to hold it. When you're doing your quilting stitch pattern, start in the middle of your project. So I'm just going to start in the center up here. And I've got the guide bar on, but I'm not really going to use it because it's so small that it's not going to be that difficult to do this. If I was doing a large quilt, I would leave that guide bar on. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I'm going straight line right down the middle of this uh, column of blocks. And I recommend leaving your needle in the down position. And then I'm just going to move over and continue stitching. So I'm going to go down this ditch here area. And I'm not having any puckering. So now I'm just going to go over and stitch in this ditch and go all the way down. Now I want the stitches to go the other way, so I'm going to just go start in the center. I've turned the block, and I'm just going to stitch right down the center of these squares. And you would continue just going over, just like you did when you were doing it on the other way. And what you do is don't look at the needle. Just look at where you're stitching. Don't look right at the needle because you'll wind up going crooked. And let me turn it over to the back. And here you can see there's a nice little stitch pattern on the back. One of my favorite stitch patterns is stitching on a diagonal. So as you can see, I've got a lot of little triangles and blocks in here so it makes it really easy to do this because all you're going to do is go up here start in this corner go straight to this corner go straight down to the next corner and so forth until you get all the way down to here we're starting in the middle and i'm just going to connect the dots that's all i'm doing and of course remove those pins and I'm looking ahead I'm not looking at the needle I'm trying to keep the corners all in alignment they're like right in front of that presser foot and I'm going to move over this way and now I'm going to start at this one. Now this is pretty easy because there's a nice little ditch area for me to follow. So I'm just going to stay right in that ditch. So now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to start over in this corner back here. Okay, so I'm going to connect the dots again. Don't look at the needle. Look at the corners of the blocks. Because this is small, this is really easy. If you were doing a really large quilt, which I don't do anymore because it's just too hard on my back, but a larger quilt, you're going to be moving slower because the quilt's going to get caught on the edge of your table. So you would have to keep the quilt lifted while you're feeding it through. This 
is the sample using the straight stitch on a diagonal. So let's turn it over to the back and I'm hoping you can see on it a little most bit. of your computerized sewing machines you do have some quilting stitches and other decorative stitch patterns. My favorite one to do is the serpentine stitch and that's what's on display right here. So I've highlighted the one I want. I have three different or actually four different serpentine stitch but this is my favorite one. When doing a decorative stitch pattern you need to make sure you don't force or pull on the fabric in any way because it will distort the stitch and it won't look as nice as it should. But as far as spacing between each row of stitching, it's the same as I uh, demonstrated in the very first one. So I'm just going to do the serpentine just going from top to bottom. Again, start in the center. And as you can see, the needle's going back and forth. I like leaving my needle in the down position. That way I don't lose my spot. I'm going to probably put mine about two inches apart. And I'm going to do another row. Always remove those pins. I'm going to turn it because I want to show you, you would just turn it, start in the middle again. This is the serpentine stitch going from top to bottom and side to side. I often make table runners that are not a bunch of squares pieced together. They're just one big long piece of fabric, but I'll use the serpentine stitch on it. And I really like it. I like really simple table runners. That's what I usually make for my own home. I have some that are a little more elaborate, but the serpentine stitch adds a lot. This is a pot holder with a corn husk applique pattern on it. And I only did one row of stitching around it and I call it an echo stitch. I'll come in closer in a minute. All I did was stitch from out here this way from the edge of the applique design came out the width of my presser foot and I stayed that width and echoed the design all the way around. So here is a close-up view of that echo stitch. Here is a pot holder in which I did many rows of the echo stitch. It's almost you know when you throw a rock into a lake and it just mimics that shape and it ripples out. Well, this is not only I call it an echo, but I call it a ripple because I just keep going out and out. And I did the same thing on this table runner. Let me show you a little bit more where I just rippled out. Now this is a very tedious process. If you don't have a lot of patience, you may not want to tackle this one. Some of your high end sewing machines. For instance, this is the Baby Lock Crescendo. will come with large decorative stitch patterns that are great for using on your borders on your quilts. So over here to the side is the stitch pattern that I selected. So while you're watching, try to look towards the back over here where my thumb is and that's where you'll see the pattern coming out. When you're doing large patterns like this, you don't want to tug on the fabric at all. You just want to keep the fabric straight so that your pattern will come out even. And you just have to hold the fabric very lightly. You don't tug on it in any way. Just keep the fabric straight. Here is the stitch pattern along this border that I just did. 
Now this is just a small little sample quilt. It's not anything that I'm going to be using. It was just something I put together so that you could see what you can do with your decorative stitching on your sewing machine. Now let's focus on the center here. There is all kinds of different embroidery stitches on this. I don't know if you've ever seen a crazy quilt. The different fabric pieces go every which way. They're uneven. There's no really specific rhyme or reason is to the direction of each piece of fabric. Now this is not a crazy quilt pattern, but I chose some stitches and did it over the seams as if it was in a crazy quilt. So let me just come in a little closer. And so you can see that there's all kinds of stitches that you can use on any of your quilts and different projects, table runners, placemats, whatever it is you want to make. So practice with the stitches on your machine. Even if all you have is a straight stitch, you'd be surprised what you can come up with. For more decorative stitch ideas, play this video until a green screen appears and then click on the links. If you like this video, would you please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on that share button to share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go to that button in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to enter your email address and click on the little bell so you receive email notifications to your phone. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, see you next time and happy sewing!